You are listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. to Impact Implosion. I am your host, uh, Seth Draken, and with me, as always, Mike Poland. Good evening. Or late evening. Turn the music off. Uh, finally. And I actually decided this at the last minute to, since we're, this is basically a pick your poison episode, I'm going to call this Pick your laxative. <laughs> so yeah, let we got a recap of the whole Bischoff storyline with Bischoff being sent out to the ring. I mean, sent out in the toilet. <laughs> and yes. thankfully that we will not see Garrett at all tonight. Yay! Yay. No Garrett. <laughs> But instead, we, we get start, away from TV forever. Sent, start off this show with Ric Flair in the ring. Who and calls he, out Hogan. Always, yeah, he always says that Hogan's always playing with him. He calls himself Rick G.O.D. Flair, and he is a wrestling god. I have two Hall of Fame rings. Yeah, I think JBL's going to be a little pissed about you calling yourself a wrestling <laughs> god. I have two all I have two rings that mean nothing. Yeah. I, and I lost one of them to Abyss who had Hulk Lantern powers. <laughs> Let's forget that. <laughs> Flair then says this is good versus evil. He says Hogan is good and Flair he Flair is the baddest man on the planet. And Hogan said something about Bischoff. Hogan says he's not here to fight, which the fans booed. Why do you? Why would anybody want to see Hogan and Flair in 2012? I don't know. That was my question. I'm like, why the hell are you booing? <laughs> I didn't even want to see it in 2000. Yeah. You know, it's almost been 20 years since their last fight. Yeah. Since their first fight. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He then Hogan says he takes his job as GM very seriously. He also called well, at least more seriously than John Laurinaitis does on Raw. Yeah, true. He then Hogan then also called uh, Bischoff evil. Oh, he, he wants lying. to make TNA successful, so he's putting Flair as one of the judges on gut check. Well, he's asking him, and Flair after ten, ten, five minutes of arguing with Hogan actually agrees to it. Yeah, and says. I, li- I like hanging with the kids. Insert your joke there. Shut up, there. Flair. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think you, you really want to hang with the kids, Flair. At your age, no. <laughs> you want them to get off your lawn. <laughs> anyway, we have a women's match to start off. Yeah, we, we first had Velvet Sky and Brooke Tessmacher talking about Gail Kim Basically, Velvet saying that she was robbed every time she faces Velvet. You know, you still lost the match. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it was a steel cage. You still lost. Get over it. You lost clean in the cage. You weren't robbed, Velvet. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, there's... Oh, wait, wait, wait. There is a DQ in the cage. I forgot. Sometimes there are DQs in cages. Which is freaking sad. You know, so in first blood matches from by pinfalls, if you remember WCW. Oh, yeah. Um, anyways, we got to the actual match with Gail Kim and Madison Rain. 
after getting a you know a cam- the cameraman doing a up up shot of uh let the pigeons Christy loose ha- doing you know an up shot from feet to head yeah one of those you know what they're they're doing there basically in the end Brooke actually hit Gail with her own finisher the eat defeat and won. And she will get a knockout title shot She's upcoming at Sacrifice. That's the third freaking time. <laughs> and she will get a knockout title shot upcoming at Sacrifice. Then we had RVD in the ring, and this oh, God. was strange. This was bad. That's, you know, RVD, RVD, RVD used supposed to, have, to be a baby face here? This is not the type of promo a baby face cuts. At all. RVD is terrible on the microphone. He talks about how great he is. Seriously. You're a face. Not a heel. That's Rude's job. And Rude came out and basically put himself over. And added one more thing. He's the world champion. And we're going to have... um. RVD versus Hardy and Rude versus Anderson later in the show. Yeah, since they got to pick each other's opponent, hence the title. Oh, wait. The f- I forgot about the crowd chant. They were chanting to Robert Bobby Rude. You are garbage. Okay, I actually give the Impact crowd f- some credit. That was... I've never heard that. That was unique. I give them points for that. <clears throat> then we had a TNA television championship match. Hey, they're actually sticking to their guns for a month. Devon defending his belt against Rob Terry or Robbie T. Skip. You know, why in God's name... You have Rob Terry in OVW for a reason. Why would you put him in the ring? And especially with the finish you had here, which is Robbie E. hitting Devon over the back of the head with the clipboard. Why is this thing with Devon and Robbie E. still going? Devon's beat him like three times already. Yeah, I don't know. They have no one else? No, but Robbie T., I'm sorry. He can't wrestle. He's never been able to wrestle. He's Stop. good as the Kevin Nash role. He has he has failed as a member of the British Invasion. As a face. As immortal. Hell, they freaking fired him in Immortal. And now he is as the British Invasion Part 2, and as now Robbie E's little buddy. Then we go backstage with Ric Flair and Al Snow. They shake hands, and Snow introduces the third and final judge. Brother Love. Brother Love, Bruce Pitch- Pritchard. Yay. What a great panel of judges that is. I think I made this, I'll make this joke later, because I basically said this. A video runs, tough enough style, complete with music and edits of Flair, Snow, and Pritchard discussing Alex Silva's performance from last week. Flair says he's not big enough. Snow says Silva choked. Pritchard gives Silva the benefit of their doubts. 63% of the Twitter fans voted in favor of Silva. They will decide later in the ring. You know, somebody... Well, Flair's playing the Simon Cowell role. It seems people get confused on whether Snow was... is uh, the Snow, I think, is Randy Jackson. And Bruce 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 Pitcher is Paul Abdul. Abdul. Seriously, the guy... I'm sorry. (laughs) You do say some negative things, but not as much as Al Snow. 
Snow's the most realistic guy here. Anyways, we saw Hulk Hogan hanging out with Mr. Anderson. Because they're friends. Because Hogan likes Ant. Hulk is one of the guys who brought Anderson in. You know, he brought Anderson, Hardy, and RVD in. They're all the top three positions right now. Besides Bobby Roode, who is thankfully the champion. Anyways, Hogan asks Anderson who he hates the most. He says Rude, and then Hogan says that RVD made that match tonight. And so Hogan wants to make it no DQ. We then get Jeff Hardy versus RVD. I was about to give Jeff Hardy credit for changing his face paint, but he still has those freaking face paint on his eyelids. When is Jeff going to learn that that's not supposed to be intimidating? It kind of makes you look like the guy who's trying to sleep in class, but the teacher, you're trying to fool the teacher that you're awake. I did that. <laughs> yeah. Put Science your, class every year. Putting, pulling and putting makeup eyes on your eyelids. So you're like, I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm right here. See, I, my eyes are open. Even though they're not. And the teacher slams the book on the desk. Yeah. Wake up. I know yeah. you're not awake. <clears throat> yeah, we know those stupid eyes. Those stupid eyes ain't fooling anyone. Anyway, on to the match. This match actually went back and forth. But then... Somebody decide Rue decides to come out to the ring. And when he meant to hit RVD with the belt while the referee ducked, he hit Jeff Hardy with the belt, and RVD wins. <clears throat> Yay. Then we had Bully Ray being stopped backstage Harassing by Mr. Jeremy Borash. All I have to say is Bully is basically owning Joseph Park in these segments. Basically, he knows Bully J- Park saying he knows Bully had something to do with Abyss's disappearance. And Bully basically tells him back off or he end up like his brother. Or if he- Oh, wait, you can't find him. Yeah. Oh, wait, you are him. Oh, wait, we'll find that <laughs> out next week. <clears throat> then we had Jeremy Borash. Gloating about what he did to Bischoff, Bully Ray comes and confronts him. He brings Borash all the way out to the ring, grabs a mic, and then says he is tired of anti-bullying. He, he says, and he says, instead I want to start a campaign for I think it's stop being a little bitch and grow some balls and stand up for yourself. Mm. And he called Borash the poster boy for little bitches. He dares Borash to punch him. Then Austin Aries comes out. And while I said Bully Ray owns Joseph Park on the mic, the exact opposite here, somebody owned Bully Ray and that was Aries. He came to the ring. Bully dares him to get in the ring. Aries does, and like, oh, like this? And then he says, <laughs> all Bully can talk about is Aries' his stature. And you know, that's one of the the lamest, the laziest excuse you have to ridicule somebody. And then basically calls Bully Ray bl- Blubber Ray. Yes, he made a fat joke. Bully tries to knock Mike, knocks the mic away and pushes him and tells him playtime is over. He gets in his face and Aries tries to just keep calm. Bully spits in Aries' face and continues to berate him. Although, what he doesn't know is Aries is going to sucker punch him and it beat the living crap out of him until security has to come and restrain Aries. 
Bully gets a low blow while he's being secured, but you can, while he's being restrained, but you can see that Bully Ray got busted. His lip is busted. He was bleeding. We had Kazarian, Kurt Angle, and Daniels in the back. Kazarian and Daniels talk about AJ and that they're going to win the titles at Sacrifice because they get a tag title shot. Angle then tells the two to shut the shut up. And not all he wants to do is make people tap and tells them to stay out of his way because Angle and Styles have a match at Sacrifice. Rudis then backstage complaining about the no DQ stipulation for tonight. Then we had a really good six man brawl, six man tag match between Kurt Angle, Kazarian, and Daniels versus AJ Styles, Magnus, and Joe. This was really good, and these guys really. This was too short. Yeah, it may have been too short, but you know what? It was still good for what it was. Yeah, and and it really tells an impact you want a match to be longer because it was good. The end comes when uh, Annual Angle has AJ in the ankle lock, but Kazarian tags himself in and Angle is pretty t- peeved. While all this goes on, AJ hits the Styles Clash on Kazarian for the win. After the match, we had Kurt Angle looking at AJ and Kazarian, I mean, Daniels and Kazarian, and they're like, what the hell are you doing? So, yeah. He was basically not happy and then walks off. Although, Daniels grabs the mic and says, next week, either AJ tells his little secret, or they will. Yay, another secret. They have on Styles, I think. We then had our gut check time. Al Snow, Ric Flair, and Bruce Pritchard come to the ring. Alex Silva is invited out. Flair votes no. Snow votes yes. Then they give Silva 30 seconds to sell himself. Silva talks about his dead dad, and he talks about his passion since childhood. And Flair then interrupts him and says, Dude. Don't talk to these fan, not these marks. Talk to us. Silva then intensif- intensifies his words and basically says the same thing, but with passion this time. Flair then changes his vote and gives the kid a fist bump, basically saying, yeah, so we don't need really Bruce Pritchard's vote since we already have two votes now for yes. But Bruce Pritchard says that before that promo, his answer was no, but he says yes. So, unanimous decision. changed his mind on Alex the promo. Uh, is now a member of the TNA roster. You know, uh, based on that promo ro- alone, I would give him the, I would give him it, but they did know him no favors with the match last week. Zero favors. Then we had our no DQ match. Pretty they good, actually. In the aisle, they get to the ring. They start fighting some more. Robert Roode hits a spine buster, which they called a double R instead of a double A spine buster. Yay, really? another yield that uses a spine buster. Really? You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna pull a WWE and basically do the Orton stomps instead of the, uh, you know, the Garvin stomps. You're gonna pull that, really? Well, nobody, no, well, none of the current audience knows who Ron Garvin is. (laughs) Well, no one in the current audience knows who Orton Anderson. Oh, wait. He's a, who was that at the Hall of Fame? Who is that with Flair, Tully Blanchard, and Barry Windham? I believe that was Arn Anderson. J.J. Dillon. Oh, yeah, J.J. Dillon, too. I believe that was Arn Anderson. So I think people know who he is, so you can't pull the double R spine buster. Nice try, though. 
We then had uh, Jeff Hardy come out after Rude was kicking the crap out of uh, Anderson. Hardy comes out, starts striking Rude. Hardy goes to check on Anderson, who grabs Hardy and hits a mic check on him because he thought it was uh, he thought it was Rude. Rude then hit Anderson in the gut with the chair, and then pinned him with a fisherman suplex. The win. And then we get RVD coming out saying that the match uh, at Sacrifice will be a ladder match. RVD then comes to the rescue, then turns his back and lets Rude hit him in the back of the head, back with the chair. So, oh, where have I seen that before? Yeah, RVD, you might want to stop smoking your weed for a minute. And pay attention. Because you just got beat up. <laughs> and he got DDT'd onto a chair as we end this show. We had a good but short six-man tag match. Two matches that would be good if we hadn't seen them f- a million times over. Yep. You had a good moment where Silva did prove he did belong. You had a... Why the hell is Robbie T getting a title shot? Shot. You had Hogan and Flair waste a few minutes of our time. Start off the show, and you had a knockout segment. Meh. Eh, It was a pretty meh show, but, like, you know, they really need to get some new matches. The problem is... I would say they need to get some new matches, but they don't have any. They've done everything. On Impact. They don't wait for pay-per-views to do these anymore. They've basically exhausted every match on an Impact. Right. So, really. what we're gonna, And look at our pay-per-view. We have Styles... Angle we've seen on Impact. We have the tag team. The only one that's... and Brooke Tessmacher, which I said earlier. Yeah, we have the world title match, which... Understand... and Rude. Really seen too much of that. Joe but... and Magnus versus Daniels and Kazarian. That either, so... There's two matches. And seen... Bully Ray and Aries. That one I can't wait to see. That one is the only one that I am actually looking forward to. Because, like it or not, those two guys sell, sold that program. Bully being the bully, and Ares actually having being able to have the mic skills to be able to back himself up. So, that'll be a good match, I hope. Although, the rest of these matches, I really don't... Uh, actually, I do like the Daniel Cesarian, although eh, I, I think it's just going to be another Joe Magnus win. Yeah, although that's a bad thing. So yeah, um, what do you th- what do you think? Meh. Yeah, it was fine. The uh, last two matches needed to be longer, and maybe the last one didn't need to be cut in by a commercial. Two seconds in. They, they always do. That's one of the things Impact does that lot, no one can stand. They cut to commercial in the middle of a match. Like when the match just started. It really is some of the dumbest stuff out there. And really, you can tape these shows, so... Stupid, so... Well, that's it for, uh, since there is no Rinka King, since that's all over. But we have one piece of news. Well, actually two, but I'll go with the first one. Apparently, um, Brooke, not Brooke Hogan, oh, gosh darn it, Linda has went on the Wendy Williams show and apologized, saying that that whole thing where she was saying that Hogan and Brutus Beefcake were butt buddies was a lie. Is she sure about that? 
you know what? I I I I believe it. It was a lie because it's Linda Hogan. She has no credibility in anything. So yeah. Then that we also have, and this was Dixie Carter's big news that would change everything. Where have I heard this before? You hear it all the time, but once again... Is Tommy Dreamer coming back? No, this time it's Impact's going to 8 p.m. Yep. Oh, yeah, change uh, yep. everything. It just means that they'll get more their butts kicked by the NFL. Yay, TNA. So, congratulations. <laughs> Well, I think that's all we have for this week. Probably. You thing to say, Mike? Nope, that's it for this week. Hope everyone enjoyed listening. All right. And we'll see you all next week on the Impact Implosion. If none of us are dead yet. 